Hey everybody, this is Scott Bosman. It's not Mark Podolsky, and this is the Roundtable Podcast. Um, we do not have any usual suspects on the call today, except for Eric Peterson and myself. And we called in Matt Forbes because how, how, how awesome is that, Mark uh, or Matt? Uh, you're at home, you're working today, and yeah. uh, you know that's a benefit uh, that you have. You get to work from home. But you just must not be too busy this afternoon. You're able to hop on the call with us, and it's uh, very much appreciated. Yeah, why don't you just call my boss? Let him know that I'm here. That sounds really good. Thanks, <laughs> hey, Scott. No, I'm psyched. Yeah. I had a I had a three o'clock meeting that just canceled, so this is great. Happy to be here. Perfect. And uh, for those who don't know, Matt's nickname is the Fortune 500, uh, Matt Forbes. So, welcome to the roundtable. Thank and, you, uh, Eric. Eric Peterson, the technician. How are you today? I'm good. I'm I'm so happy that that Matt's here with us and that he has a nickname because if he didn't have a nickname already, we would have had to come up with one and and that you know, I'd rather just have it done for us. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Outsource that. I like it. Yeah, outsource it. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't think very well on the spot like that unless I, it's nightcap and I have a bourbon in my hand. I do better <laughs> then. So right now I'm a little nervous. Uh, but anyway, so. Everybody else is playing hooky. Mark is in St. Louis, which props to Mark. He flew into St. Louis for Mother's Day to, to surprise his mom, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, Zeno's at the firehouse. Scott, Todd, and Tria are off doing other things, and Tate's on vacation. So it's just us, here we us are. three that are working. Here we are. Just us girls. I love it. <laughs> so... Uh, we had to come up with a topic quickly and we thought we would talk about uh, a question that uh, we get a lot. And I don't remember talking about this on the round table for quite a while. So it's always good to revisit things uh, now and then, but you know, one of the key uh, aspects of this business is that really over 90% of this can be outsourced and automated and you can get to the point where you're working, you know, a few hours a week in your land business. Um, but you know, you have cornerstones in this business, you have mailing and marketing, you need to create a machine for those things. Right. And I think land geek helps you do that. But the other, the other main aspect of this uh, business is, and Mike Zano says this all the time, it really is a team sport. So we would, thought we would talk today about how do we build this team and, for the beginner just getting into this, uh, it is maybe a little bit of an overbearing thing to think about or an overwhelming th thing to think about is, well, how do I get to this point where I have a team, uh, you know, operating my business for me? Uh, so I thought we'd just talk a little bit about that today. Uh, how do you build a team? Uh, Eric, what are your thoughts? Uh, when do you start thinking in that regard and, and how, do you, how do you chip away at that? So, you know, it, it's not uncommon for me to start working with a new coaching student and them to be in a position where either none of their business is outsourced or very small portions of their business is outsourced. And, you know, a lot of times it just comes down to, to not really knowing how to get started. How do I, how do I teach somebody how to do this particular task in my business? How do I actually go out and hire that person? How do I make sure that I'm hiring the right person for that job? So in all honesty, I mean, I think that we just have to take it one step at a time. So uh, Scott Todd talks about pain points in your business. So it's a great place to start. What do you absolutely not like doing in your business? If that's posting ads on Facebook, if it's you know, writing copy or any other thing in this business, you know, identify that thing and begin to wrap your head around what it takes to do that particular process. Uh, in the example of a Facebook ad, uh, you know, you've got to log into Facebook, you've got to go to marketplace, you've got to post that ad, you might have to write the ad if it doesn't exist. And then, after that, what do we need to do? We need to respond to those people that inquire about it. So, so we get, begin to kind of plan that rough outline. We can then maybe record ourselves 
doing that process and kind of talk through it, um, which might seem kind of weird and, and feel a little awkward as you're doing it. But I, you know, in doing that, you're going to produce content that your team, your future team can use to learn how to do this process. And you don't have to spend the time going forward, you know, teaching each new person in this role, how to do that. Um, a tool that that's commonly used to record that type of content would be Loom, L-O-O-M dot, I think it's dot com, is it not? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, and that allows you to record your screen to, to kind of talk about what you're doing. And that's, that's a really easy way to communicate with your team and kind of demo how to do something. So, um, you know, I guess beyond that, there are kind of done for you services out there, teams of VAs that already know how to do some of the regular tasks in our business. Um, and those, they, they're probably a good place for many people to start because there's a little less training, but it could also be a crutch because if, if we go to one of those services and we don't have to do the training, we're not, we're not really helping ourselves in the long run because it inevitably sooner or later, there's going to be a task or a process in your business that you're going to have to build. So you might as well get the reps in early and, um, and begin to learn those processes. Yeah. One of the best things I ever did was I, I upgraded my loom subscription from free to, to paid. Uh, I used the free one for a long time and I, I tried to cut down all of my instruction into five minute videos. <laughs> five minutes. And uh, it was, it became very frustrating because I, you know, I'd have to create basically part A, B, C, and D for one task and then try to organize it on Loom and whatnot. But listen, uh, when I upgraded and I don't know, it's not much, right? It's like nine bucks a month yeah, or 10 bucks, something yeah. like that. Uh, for, for unlimited videos, man, that really helped, uh, really helped my business. And uh, you can stay nice and organized in Loom and create folders and, and categorize all your processes. So I, I love Loom as a tool and uh, it's it's been very beneficial for us. So, and, and I totally agree with you, Eric, you know, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose these major pain points. Another factor in all of this when you're trying to build a team is that you have very, a lot of us have very limited time when we're getting started in this business. And that on top of building the team is another challenge. So what I encourage people to do is, just, you got to continue to have a few focused hours a day or one focused hour a day, two focused hours a day and make a priority list for that day. Uh, knowing that mailing and marketing are not, not an option. Like those are things that yep. need to be done absolutely every single day. Once those are done, uh, what's next on your list that you can spend a little bit of time on today and a little bit of time on tomorrow uh, to eventually uh, get off your plate? And it's a process. It's a process for so much of this. But uh, Matt Forbes, what are your thoughts on, on building a team? Well, since Eric, you know, partially taught me how to do it, it's tough to be like, dude, you're wrong. Um, he's right about everything he said. He always is. It's so frustrating. Um, I, think the, I think the other part of this, though, for me is my, my business changed. And I was outsourcing way prematurely, like, as you know, Scott, like it was <clears throat> not the best. So when they're like, don't do it too soon, what they mean is don't do it too soon. It, it is, it can be bad. Um, that's how I did it. Um, but swim laning, the finally Scott Todd made me swim lane and I hated every second of it. Um, best thing I ever did by far. Cause it was just obvious. Like you, it's undeniable. Like, wow, look at that. I do everything, huh? Here it is. And so I think for me for a long time, it was, Hey, outsource the thing you hate, like no problem, but I hate so much of this. It's so hard to pinpoint what I hate the most. And we did outsource stuff, but the, the swim lane made it really, really apparent where I was in the business, which was we were doing everything because it's my wife and I, so we, you know, we have more hours to put into this. And that was a huge mistake. So as soon as we swim lane, it became really, really clear what we had to outsource uh, because of where we were, you know, with that swim lane. And we, I mean, I'm not making this up, hand to God, we were swim laning today. Again, for the 87,000th time, I bought her a remarkable for Christmas or her birthday or whatever, just so we could swim lane, like, you know, sitting on the couch. 
but we were doing that for like an hour earlier today. Not during work hours. Yeah. I mean, this is how geeky Matt Forbes is. He brings his whiteboard with him on vacation uh, in the family RV. I did. They, uh, you know, they swim lane for breakfast. So. Well, look, if you're swim laning in the rental house, the rental house is expensible. So um, that's what we did. It was great. And I'll have you know, you don't know this guy, Bosman, but there's a much bigger whiteboard over there. Oh, I can Office just imagine. Max. Office Max was going out of sale or going out of business. And I'm like, <laughs> what's the largest whiteboard you have? My wife's like, no, please, no, 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 no more of these things. I'm like, yes, I want the eight foot whiteboard of death. So it's awesome. She has to stand on a stool. She's like trying to draw the lines. She can't even get all the way across. It was, it was good. All right. I want the dimensions on that thing. What what are the dimensions? dimensions. It's bigger than me. So (laughs) it's pretty huge. Uh, All right. Well, there you have it. Everybody get yourselves a whiteboard and and work on your, on your swim lanes. Um, Awesome. Any other uh, parting words of, uh, of wisdom there, Eric? I think, um, you know, the best thing I would say is, is just get started because, yeah, you know, if you're going to continue to do this business, you're going to work yourself into a full-time job if you don't start outsourcing this stuff as, as you're learning how to do it. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I see people come into coaching where, you know, the land business is a second job for them. And that's not why they got into this. They, they want to build a business that can more or less run on by itself. And um, that takes outsourcing. It takes building a team. It takes software. It takes automation, all of those things. Um, if I were to give one tip about um, creating content to to train your VAs or teach them how to do a process, I would say um, segment those videos as much as possible. In other words, don't go out and create a half hour long video on how to, you know, post an ad on Facebook as an example. Break that down as much as possible because if you need to make a change later, the last thing you want to do is re-record a half hour video walking through the entire thing. If you can re-record a, a two minute segment, as opposed to that entire 30 minutes, you'll be much happier and it'll get done much faster. Awesome. I think, I think it was Taria once uh, recently was saying, um, she now has VAs uh, that create training videos for her. So if there is something that she's trained the VAs on, that changes. Uh, the VA then is in charge of updating the training video, uh, which I, I thought was a really awesome way to keep things updated in your business. It's very slick. Yeah, John Burnett it. does the same thing. In fact, he trains his VA sometimes by simply having a call with the VA. Literally, they set up an hour-long call. He talks about it. Then he hits record. Then he does it with them live doing it and then sends them the video and says, okay, do it like this. And he does break it up into sections because you're right, uh, Eric, things change. But most important thing, right, is you got to get out of the business, right? You got to not quit, right? That's, I mean, you guys are in coaching. You, you know, you guys see it all. I just know, you know, friends who have started this and quit. And I know friends who have stayed, you know, started and stuck with it. But the easiest way to really want to be out of the business, to quit, to, to say, forget it, is by doing everything yourself and then having a second job. And it's a disaster because there's a lot, like it's a lot, it's hard. There's a lot going on. Um, and training VAs, it's not that it's difficult, but there's a little bit of an art form to it. You got to get good at it. You might as well get good at it now because the more you outsource, the faster you're going to go, the more time you're going to have to work on the business, not in the business. And you're going to hit that hockey stick inflection point much, much sooner if more work is getting done. So, Awesome. Very good, guys. Well, appreciate it. Uh, Anybody volunteer for the uh, tip of the week? Anyone? (laughs) Uh, Eric Peterson does. That's great, Eric. Thanks. I've been tip. I am not prepared to offer a tip of the week. And I've been looking a little bit as, as we've been talking today 
And uh, so far, I, I have been unsuccessful in locating a, a useful tip. So um, I'm going to have to pass for today. Oh, you're going to have to pass. Okay. Yes. I see how you're. I am. Uh, all right. Well, I think we've already talked about one and that's loom.com. So I think that's a great tip of the week is to utilize loom.com. But I have one that I found this week, which I thought is kind of cool. Now you may have to be a Mac user for this. There's an app that is called uh, session. And have you heard of this, Eric? Um, I don't know. It you're, sounds vaguely familiar, but you're a Mac sure. guy, but uh, so this is, um, an app for time management. If you have problems with uh, focusing or getting distracted or, or whatnot, basically uh, it is, uh, it's kind of a Pomodoro uh, tool that enables you to segment your day. So let's say you have something on your priority list uh, and that is county research. Um, and you need to sit down and spend some focus time on county research for 25 minutes today. Well, you go to your Pomodoro timer, you can block out all the other apps on your computer, uh, type in county research, set the timer for 25 minutes, and there you go, you have, you have that focus time. But then what you can do is you can segment your day, and at the end of the day, you can see where you've spent your time. Uh, so I think it's kind of, and it does integrate with your calendars as well. That's a paid, uh, I think that's a paid service. I just have the free option right now. But um, you can kind of break your day up in little segments categorize your day using a Pomodoro timer. And then at the end of the day, see where you spent your time. And I, I thought it was kind of a cool, uh, cool. So session. Is that call? is the website stay in session.com? Uh, well, this it's a, it's a, it's an app on the app store for Mac. Mac. Okay. Come on. Who uses a Mac? Come on. Let me see if I can find the, I think, yeah, it's stayinsession.com yeah. is, is the okay. is the website. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, Does pretty what's cool. what's intriguing to me is the the idea of being able to look back at the day or the week and see right. how you logged your time. So you know, when we start working with with coaching students in in reference to you know getting out of their business, um, you know, using a tool like that could really give someone a, a real good look on the amount of time they're spending working in the business as opposed to on the business. All right. right. Gonna get my thing. I'm going to go get oh. my, my answer to that. Hang on one second. Oh, your answer to that. Okay. Hold on. Did I actually have a successful tip of the week and no one's here? That's <laughs> not fair. <laughs> Only, you, or, Only you, Bosman. Only you. Matt's a about to tip. tear it apart though. Yeah. He's, he's got a whiteboard that works better. <laughs> <laughs> there's Here your timer i have the ibm answer to that i i bought this because i found myself doing tasks for land that i liked i liked doing this i liked doing that and then i would spend like two three hours on it right so you literally take it and it counts back and it gives you the little red dial right interestingly what i found is in my accountability group of a couple of other land geekers both of them have the same clock which i had no idea about one of them was for the same reason, although it was much smaller, John. And then the other one had it for their kids, like their two-year-old. But it's a great way to be like, okay, I've got a half an hour. I'm going to go do X, whether I hate it or I love it. And I want to limit it or yeah. make sure I get it all in. It doesn't matter. Just do something. The session thing is cooler, but it's for a Matt. Awesome. It, what's, what's that clock called, Matt, for those that are listening? Um, best clock ever. <laughs> on amazon.com <laughs> i don't know lady i have no idea countdown clock 25 7 I, I don't know it's just a dumb clock okay. dumbclock.org i don't know I, I like it though and it has a timer on it or, yeah I mean, it, it has is a, a timer i actually i wish it wasn't a timer i yeah. wish it would just get to zero like i get it there's a big red thing and when there's no red thing i'm out of time like i i, I don't need it to ding and to tick i just need it to <laughs> To go i actually I, I turn I, red yeah so i it, when you're out of time not when you have time that's how much time you have left right so it counts like what you have left but if you can hear it like literally it's a clock i don't yeah right i i opened it up time. and i tried to take the bell out and then i broke it and i had to put it all back together 
and now it's <laughs> yeah so so session.com is the tip yeah. of the week it is but yeah my yes. clock big clock so, well it's not session.com it's stay in session.com whatever it's for a mac it's lame don't worry about it it's cool all right yeah <laughs> All good. Anyway, uh, anyway, so I thought we, I thought we had a pretty successful uh, roundtable without without the usual suspects. Uh, except thinking back, I did not do a very good intro, so Mark's going to haze me on that. I'm sure. Well, he can he can go back in and cut it in then. Yeah, why don't you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He, he can do we cut have it to in. do a, a sponsor buy? Yeah, I think uh, we should probably do. We should probably talk about uh, the the sponsor for today's roundtable, and that's uh, Flight School, Land Geek Flight School. Transform. What's Mark say? Transform your life in sixteen weeks uh, with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Um, mm -hmm. leading, he'll lead you up the land investing mountain, and uh, you'll be de doing deals in no time. Uh, the next Flight School is June thirtieth. June thirtieth is the next Flight School. Um, Another important date that people should put on their calendar, I think, is uh, the next boot camp, which is live in Las Vegas. The first time we've been live in over a year and a half, uh, August 12th through the 14th. And I believe registration is open for that now. So you can go to thelandgeek.com slash boot camp and register. Uh, there's a block of rooms available. And I think it's going to be a pretty amazing boot camp. Forbes, you coming? It's going to sell out so fast. Everybody okay. wants to be in person. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good time. I, I, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit different than it used to be, but um, I want to go. I, I, we're, we're debating. Um, we have something else that weekend, so I'm trying ah. to figure it out. But I've been to like seven. I'm a big fan. You know how much I like boot camp, so I'll be sad to I miss know. it. We would be sad if we you were not there. So. Last time Oops. I saw Eric Peterson might have been Las Vegas, as he sat waiting for his plane by himself with his like headphones on, <laughs> trying to make sure no one knew who he was because he was so exhausted. It had been a boot camp. The guy's like flat out going to fall asleep, dead tired. I was like, oh, he really gave it his all. Let's go poke him. I'm where I talked to him. Exactly I might have had a hood on too and was, was hiding underneath it. Uh... <laughs> That's good stuff. All right. Well, uh, keep it on your radar, folks. Um, all right. We're going to do this. Matt oh, Forbes. Yeah, we got to. You ready? I'm going to mouth it so that no one can say it's going to be great. No, you can't mouth it. Uh oh. Sure, I can. Do whatever Heaven. I want. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, no. It's yep. Oh, no. Okay. I had a phone call come in and I thought it disrupted things. All right. You ready? Three, two, one. Let, let let freedom ring. Freedom ring. Why do you guys go so slow? Why don't you just say I know it? that one was super slow. God, I was waiting for, for five Scott years. To lead I've it, not understood like, this. Honestly, you know people, what? just say the words. Just let it go. Just let freedom <laughs> ring like that. All right. But listen, you didn't say it that way. So say it that way. That's how it should be. Do you like? I, I mean, I have a degree in technical theater. Do we need to have a lesson at the next boot camp? <laughs> Is that what I we think need we to do? do? Yeah. Think Maybe. So. That was a terrible <laughs> lead freedom wing. That's definitely probably top top 20 worst. <laughs> I mean, just saying. Yeah. It could well, definitely have been better. It's, um, okay. it's gotten to the point where can. you guys are like, we'll attribute it to my poor leadership. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> like, you're like, what are you doing? Just uh, say the words. Okay. <laughs> You know, like uh, I said, the tribute to my poor round leadership. table viewers everywhere. Just say the words. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try to do better next time. <laughs> it's actually technically well, lately it's been going really well, honestly. But all right. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Matt Forbes. You bet. Thanks, Matt. You bet. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.